hi guys this is chef Jin academy welcome to another video in this video we are going to be looking at how to detail reinforced concrete beam based on the engineer's approach we have different kind of beam but we'll be focusing on continuous beam simply supported beam and cantilever beam in order for us to be able to detail a beam we first need to understand the design of the beam in design of beam, beam are designed in such a way that they resist both tension and shear. So, in, therefore, we need to provide tension reinforcement and also shear reinforcement. The tension reinforcement are usually referred to as longitudinal reinforcement, while the shear reinforcement are called the shear links. They are provided in order to resist tension and shear, respectively. So, aside for the loading effect which induce shear and bending on the beam another factor we have to consider in detailing of reinforced concrete beam is whether the beam is singly reinforced or doubly reinforced so when there is no need for us to provide compression reinforcement then the beam is said to be singly reinforced and where there is need to for us to provide compression reinforcement then we say the beam is doubly reinforced so there is significant amount of reinforcement in the tension zone as well as the compression zone a doubly reinforced section is much more heavily loaded compared to a singly reinforced section so let us take a couple of examples on the detailing of each of this type of beam This diagram is trying to show a singly reinforced beam. You can see that the beam is supported at both ends, at this end, at the right hand and at the left hand. So this kind of beam are considered to be singly reinforced. Also, you can see the way the shear force diagram goes and also the way the bending moment diagram goes. So based on the bending moment diagram, we can only see that there is need for us to provide reinforcement at the bottom part of the beam. So due to this, for a singly, for a simply supported beam, the reinforcement are provided at the, the main reinforcement are provided at the bottom. So that is why you can see for this beam, we have three number of 16 mm reinforcement. In the nomenclature of beam reinforcement, most of the time beam are arranged in this sequence. We have three, three is trying to show the number of reinforcement. Y is trying to denote the type of reinforcement. In this case, the reinforcement is I yield. Then 16 is the diameter of reinforcement. 2 is the bar mark. This bar mark is the number you check for this beam in the bar bending schedule that depicts in which you can look for the length and the cutting length of the beam. Then B1 is the position of the beam. That is bottom one, bottom position. Then if you look at the top of this beam, you can see that we provided two Y16 as well. We are providing this in such a way that to provide enough in order for the reinforcement to be able to hold the shear links. This reinforcement, you can see that if we provide only bottom reinforcement, the shear links will not be adequately taken care of because there is, a, there is no reinforcement at the top. So that is why we need to provide top reinforcement so that the shear links will be properly hold. So that is the reason why for this simply reinforced beam, we are providing two number of 16 mm. So at the end of the day, the detailing of the beam is going to go this way, the section. So these are the three number of reinforcement at the bottom. And this is the two number of reinforcement which are provided as a anger bar in order to hold the shear links. So the shear links are arranged in such a way that we have, we provide a minimum cover away from the column. This is the section of the column that is supporting the beam. So the shear links are provided about 50, 50 millimeters away from the column from the start of the beam. And then wherever you have a support, you, you end the reinforcement at, at 50, 50 millimeters away from the support. If you look at the way the shear links is being called, you can see that we only arrange it using a straight line. Because if you are looking at a beam from the outside section, you can only see a straight part of the shear links. 
So the nomenclature of the share links is just like that of a D beam. The number here is the number. You can see that it is arranged from this direction to this, from this position to this position. So that means you have 38 number of share links. Y is the type of steel, which is I yield. 10 is the diameter of reinforcement. Most of the time, the the diameter of reinforcement used for shear depends on the design and it usually ranges from 6 millimeters to 12 millimeters. Then 3 is the bar mark. This is the number you check for when you are looking for this reinforcement in the bar bending schedule. Then 175 is the spacing in which you arrange the reinforcement. So according to this picture, the spacing between each of these shear links is what we refer to as spacing, which is in this case is 175 millimeters. Then you can easily show the shear links here. So the second diagram here is also a simply supported beam, but the difference here is that this beam is heavily loaded. So in that case, the beam is said to be doubly reinforced. So the first beam is singly reinforced, but we are providing reinforcement at the top just to provide as anger bar to support the shear links. So the second beam is a singly reinforced beam, but in this is a simply supported beam, but in this case, it is doubly reinforced. That is why you can see the bending moment diagram will look closely like the, the first one. So the bending moment diagram will look exactly like this, but due to the high huge load acting on it, you need to provide compression reinforcement at the top. So that is why for this beam, we have two number of, three number of 20 mm at the bottom, which is B1 position. And then above it, you have three number of 16 mm at the top, above the 20 mm reinforcement. These are the reinforcement provided for the top reinforcement. Then for the, these are the reinforcement provided for the bottom reinforcement. For the top reinforcement, which is the compression zone, you have to provide, we provided three number of 16 mm reinforcement. So, and then one thing you have to look for is the detailing of the section. You can see that we have three number of 16 mm at the top. Then we have 16 mm, three number of 16 mm above it, which is what we have here, the B1 and the B2. But you notice that we place a spacer. The purpose of this spacer in detailing is to separate this 20 mm reinforcement from the 16 mm reinforcement so that these two reinforcements will not get stick together when pouring concrete. Then at the top of the reinforcement, we provide three number of 16 mm and also we show the shear link reinforcement. So this is the shear links. The size of the beam is 225 by 600. To get more in-depth knowledge on detailing, I have a course on Udemy titled Structural Detailing of Reinforced Concrete using AutoCAD. In this course, I'm going to show you step by step how you can use AutoCAD in order to detail solid slab, raft slab, RC columns, staircases, also how to detail irregular shaped slab, slab with openings, how to detail RC beam, shear wall, foundations, both part footing, combined footing, raft slab, and also how to prepare by bending schedule. Then another amazing part of this is you are also going to learn how to correctly place structural drawings into sheet using AutoCAD with the correct scale. So this course is about nine hours video and you have a lot of articles and downloadable resources attached to the course. So this is really amazing. If you are really interested in learning the, the the real detailing, then you should try and take this course. At this course, I will leave the link in the description of this video, so you can check the link of the description of this video to get the course. Then the second type of beam we are going to be discussing is the continuous beam. You can see in this case, this continuous beam have more than two support. We have one hand here. This is a support at the fixed end then we also have another support at the middle and this is a support here and notice this beam actually have an overhanging section so for a typical continuous beam this is how the bending moment of a typical continuous beam is so with this bending moment you can see that we have much more moment at the 
support region this is the mid span the mid span for the first so for the first span this is the mid span for the end span and then we have the support moment so that means the span moment for this beam is about 44 kilo newton meters while the support moment is about 78.13 kilo newton meters then the shear force diagram goes this way so due to the way the bending moment diagram is so there is need for us to provide extra reinforcement at the top here so that is why you see that we have a we have three number of reinforcement here and then at the support region we have an additional reinforcement of 216 this is because of the value of the bending moment Then another important thing you have to take note in a continuous beam is the lapping. The lapping zone for beam. When you are at the bottom of the reinforcement, your lapping zone has to be close to the support region. But when you are at the top of the, the top reinforcement are lap away from the support region. So the bottom reinforcement will be lapped close to the support region, just like the way you have it here. And the reason for this is the bending moment diagram reduces. That is the, the sagging moment reduces at the close to the support. You can see in this diagram, there's, there is little or no moment at the support region, little or no sagging moment. That is what I mean. The, the moment below the beam this is the beam the moment below it i refer to as the sagging moment while the moment above it i refer to as the hugging moment you can see that near the support there is no moment there is no sagging moment and there is no hugging moment so in that case you can easily lap because lapping are done at area where we have little or no moment and then for the top reinforcement which is what we provided for the augy moment you can see that you cannot lap at the at the support because that is where we have the maximum bending moment due to this you have to extend your lapping away from the support so that is why in this case you can see that the lapping is being done close to the support that is for the bottom reinforcement then the last type of reinforcement we are going to be looking at is the contin is the cantilever beam. The cantilever beam where there is no additional beam in which to support the beam. So in that case, the bending moment of short beam actually goes like this. So we have the ma maximum bending moment at the top of the beam. So because of that, you have to provide is reinforcement at the top so that is why for this kind of beam for this beam we are having four number of 20 mm at the top and then we provide a minimal reinforcement at the bottom in order for us to hold the shear links so and then one thing you have to note is when there is no attached beam to a cantilever beam you have to extend the return reinforcement into the con concrete column so that is why you see that this reinforcement for the beam is extended down to the column so and then the minimum extension length is about the length of the cantilever beam or 1.5 times the length of the cantilever beam so between one between the length of the cantilever beam and 1.5 times the length of the cantilever beam you can extend your reinforcement into the supporting column so this is how to detail reinforced concrete beam. If this is your first time on this channel, kindly hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification, and then you get to watch more video like this. See you next time.